Welcome to Time Out, an exciting new educational video series brought to you by First Case. In this series, we're bringing you easy to access education with no fees and no tests. Break free from boring staff meetings and dive into educational content that you can put into practice immediately. So let's get started with today's episode of Time Out. Welcome to the show. We're going to be talking about surgical wound classification today. Understanding how to classify surgical wounds is important, not just because we want our charting to be accurate, because of course we do, but also because incorrectly classifying surgical wounds can adversely affect surgical site infection reporting and reimbursement. So we have to understand the different classifications and make sure that we are documenting our surgical wounds correctly. The CDC has classified surgical wounds from class one to class four. And AORN has made a fantastic decision tree to help you decide how to classify your surgical wound. But remember, if you're the staff nurse charting in the OR, it's not entirely up to you to decide how to classify the wound. Ideally, it should be a collaborative effort between the surgeon and the perioperative RN after all the factors specific to the patient and the case have been considered. So don't think you have to do this all on your own. All right, let's take a look at each of the four wound classes and break them down just a little bit. Class one, this is considered a clean wound. And generally, this is the easiest one to classify. This is an incision made in ideal operating room conditions. There's no break in sterile technique. The wound has a primary closure And if a drain is used, it's a closed drain, the bulb type drain. There's no inflammation present and we don't enter. And this is very important. We don't enter the alimentary, respiratory, or genitourinary tracts. Examples of a clean class one wound would be a total knee or a total hip arthroplasty, an ACDF, a thyroidectomy, mastectomy, or hernia repair, just to name a few. Next is class two. This is a clean contaminated wound, but this isn't a step up from class one. You can't upgrade your class one incision to a class two. Class two wounds refer to a controlled, and that's the operative word here, controlled entrance into the alimentary, respiratory, or genital urinary tract, and there's no unusual contamination. Think lobectomy, hysterectomy, small bowel resection, or a turf. We still have to have a primary wound closure and no signs of infection or inflammation can be present. Also, there can't be a major break in technique, like a cholecystectomy with bile spillage. It would no longer be a class two wound if there was any type of spillage. Now, we've clarified class one and class two. Now let's look at class three and class four. Class three wounds are contaminated. They can be fresh, open accidental wounds or they can be surgical wounds where gross spillage occurred that contaminated the operative area think that cholecystectomy that i mentioned a minute ago they can also be caused by major breaks in sterile technique like using instruments that aren't sterile you would also classify a wound as class three if you found acute non-purulent inflammation present for any type of procedure but if there's pus present it's not class three Finally, class four. These are the dirty and infected wounds. These are old wounds, greater than four hours duration that are from a dirty source or have necrotic tissue, a foreign body or fecal contamination in them. This also applies to wounds that have an existing clinical infection with inflammation, pus and drainage. Examples include repairing a perforated bell, managing an abscess, or an irrigation and debridement of an infected total joint. All right, that covers all of the four wound classes and hopefully helps you understand what you're looking for just a little bit better. But remember, you are not responsible for determining the wound class all on your own. This is a collaborative decision. Talk to the surgeon, and discuss the incision site and any pertinent information about the surgery so that you can accurately classify the surgical wound. That is all the time that we have for today. Thank you for joining me. I'm your host, Melanie Perry. Thanks for watching.
that's going to do it for this episode of Time Out. As a reminder, you can help support us with a like, a share, or by subscribing to this channel. You can also subscribe to the First Case Podcast on your favorite podcast application. I would appreciate a rating and a review because your feedback is important to this show. On behalf of everyone at First Case, thank you for watching this episode of Time Out. Thank <laughs> you.